Okay guys, as promised, this is going to be a lesson on how are we going to evaluate the double integral over region R uh, when region R is a type 2. Now, I, I did say previously that region R can be very complex and we need advanced uh, techniques of mathematical analysis to define the region R. But that's why I, you know, I like to down as type 1 and type 2. Now, personally, I don't like to label them as type 1 and type 2 because as you practice more and more, you know, you, you should find it's very easy to identify whether it's type 1 and type 2 and put in the appropriate limits. But since, for the benefit of those high school students without calculus background, let alone single calculus background or single variable calculus background as so I want to go through an example in its entirety so we know what's going on and you know it's also good for you to learn all these minor details all right um, I would like to go back to the theorem okay the theorem that we started out with two lessons ago the double integral of f um, f the function f of x and y over the region r is given by this iterated integral okay now we can either integrate with respect to x or integrate with respect to y or vice versa depend on whether it's type 1 or type 2 so for the purpose of a type 2 region we will integrate with respect to x and then with respect to y now I did mention again that you know when you integrate with respect to x the, the limits have to be in terms of y because when you substitute them inside you are then able to integrate the whole function in terms of y Okay, but let's just take, let's slow it down a bit and look at this theorem or what this theorem tells us. Now, for those who have a keen eye of calculus, you may parallel this with the fundamental theorem of calculus because, you know, fundamental theorem of calculus really it means this, integrate something and then we can, you know, apply the limits. Now, I'm not going to call it the fundamental theorem of double integral calculus because that's not what it's called and I don't want to be saying something which the mathematical gods will strike me after that. Okay, but really, um, this is telling us is the volume of the solid, okay, that's bounded by the region R and the surface uh, function F in terms of X and Y. Now, implicit inside that expression is the region R, which, you know, like I said, we do certain steps to define it, and we got that expression over here. Now, the reason why I want to raise this up is because the common denominator, uh, not such a right use of the word, but the common factor between the two is the function um, F in terms of X and Y. Now, you might be thinking, hey, Danny, why aren't you sketching the, the three-dimensional space? Because after all, the double integral does uh, involve getting the volume. But you see, that is not our initial point of concern right now. Because the function stays the same, the surface is not going to change. Our lesson is focusing on identifying that region R because that is going to be a problem when we want to, you know, put in appropriate limits. Now, subsequent advanced questions, yes. We do need to look at the at the surface, especially when it cuts through the x and y axis, but uh, x and y plane. But we're not doing that right now. So don't be alarmed. I mean, the last lesson you saw me drawing, you know, x and y. You know, it's like, hey, we are finding vo volumes. You know, why drawing x and y? It's because this this lesson and the last one was focusing on finding the equation of region R, so that you know we can put in the limits. So. Type 2 region is over here and let's move on right to it. Now the steps 1 and 2 parallels that of the type uh, 1 region. So you know it's basically the same. Now what we're going to do now is that we're going to draw a horizontal line first. Okay, as opposed to a vertical line. And then you know we pick a point in the line, same thing. Now I must say that the line must be, it should be y equals to a certain constant. So y equals to a. Um, sorry, this should be a over here. Okay, so we move to the left and once you reach that boundary, that is going to be our h1y. Okay? And after that we move to the right, that's going to be our h2y. Now the only difference here is that I'm using H instead of G, you know, to distinguish the two, and it's in terms of Y, okay? Uh, it should be obvious right now. Okay, then after that, you would move the, the thing up and down, right? Oh, sorry, yeah, yeah, okay, it's correct. Um, so after that, you move the horizontal line up and down, and then when you reach the lower limit, okay, this is the lowest point, this is going to be C, okay? So this is Y equals to C, and when you move up, the highest point is going to be D, okay? Y equals to D. Now, I must say that um, this is really a function of x, sorry, um, x written in terms of y. So, a function in terms of y that will give us x, right? So, what does it mean? Well, it means that we pick a value of y and then we'll get the appropriate point or the appropriate value of x, okay? Um, because for all of us, we're always dealing with terms of, of x, but uh, that's another way to visualize it. So basically, that's what it means. And with h1, h2, um, c and d, we can just put in the values over here and, you know, find the double integral through the iterated uh, or repeated integral. So what better way to go through that example than a simple example? Okay. What do we have here? Let's find double integral of this expression, uh, 2x take away y squared uh, over the region r. And it's a triangle region R, which is bounded by the line y equals to minus x plus 1, y equals to x plus 1, and y equals to 3. Okay. Now, once you are good enough in all these methods of calculus, you do not need to sketch the region R. There are certain ways you can anticipate to immediately find h1, h2, um, c, and d. But for the purpose of learning, okay, and it's good as good practice, 
we don't know what this region looks like at the moment. So we need to sketch out these lines and find the region R, okay, which I've done so over here. Okay, y equals to x plus 1 this line, y equals to minus x uh, plus 1 is this line. So uh, this two lines plus the line y equals to 3, we get this region over here like so. This is our region R. What is the, the surface? The surface is z equals to the function of x and y. That is this one over here, but that is not our point of concern. Our point of concern is region R, which is defined over there. So use the same method, okay? Horizontal line, pick a point on the line, go to the left for the h1 in terms of y, and we have this thing over here. Now, here is the part where students make a lot of mistakes. H1 needs to be in terms of y. What do I have? I have y equals to minus x plus 1. Am I going to put minus x plus 1 inside here, such as this? Okay? It's not going to make any sense at all, okay? We need to somehow rearrange this. Yes, it's the same function, but we need to write it in terms of x, which is essentially as easy as this, okay? So remember, this needs to be in terms of y. H1 needs to be in terms of y. So this is not, it's going to be 1 take away y. Okay, that's our H1. We move to the left. We got H1, uh, sorry, H2. And what is it equal to? Well, basically after some rearranging, you just simply get y minus 1. All right, so we got our H1, we got our H2. What is our C? Our C is that we move the line down. We are across this point of intersection. Uh, if you do some quick calculations, that is y equals to 1. Okay, and then we move up y equals to 3. So basically, we got this, this, we got this, and we got this. And let's use our theorem to evaluate the double integral. Okay, let me erase this away from the board. And at this point, it should be uh, very straightforward. Okay, so um, what's the problem? The problem is to find the double integral of uh, the function is um, 2x minus y squared. 2x minus y squared um, dx dy. Okay, so when I would use c and d, Applying this, uh, c is 1, 3, um, the left one is 1 minus y, and y minus 1. The function stays the same, okay? I can't overemphasize that uh, anymore. And there is what we have. And then we just use the methods of calculus to get the job done. Integrate 1 to 3, I would have to put x squared minus y squared. Using, again, I must say, partial integration. But um, I really don't like the term. Um, what we're doing is that we're holding... Um, y fix. Okay, let's let's uh, look at that. Um, integrate with respect to x, right? So we need to hold y fix. Okay, so y stays the same. Just integrate with respect to x. X goes here. Okay, and you know raise the power by one, so two, and then divide by two, we get uh, x squared. Okay, and then later. Now this is a notation that may help you out a bit, but you don't really need to do do that if you know what if you, you know what's going on. I wrote x is equals to one minus y. This tells me that I'm gonna substitute. Uh, for the axis inside the, the, the brackets are uh, 1 minus y, okay? Because we are so used to, you know, writing term, things in terms of um, x, think, think, thinking that we're going to substitute inside where y is. That is certainly not the case because now we need to integrate with respect to y. Why is all this changing? Well, basically because it's a type 2 region. Type 2 regions is defined in this way. You know, we need to, you know, know what the limits are. So, um, just substitute them uh, inside, okay? And then after that, we'll get something like this, uh, 1, 3, and then uh, as expected again, we will get a function solely in terms of y for us to carry out the integration. No surprise there. Where there's x's, we put in uh, terms in terms of y, we get this one over here, and when we integrate, we get our value of our volume. Okay, sorry, this is a 3. We get the value of our volume. So, you know, if you were to project the x, uh, z axis out, the, the surface will be here, and that's the volume that we get. Um, okay, you should know that by now. Right, so there is all there is to it. Now, um, just a quick note, okay, before we, we end off this part of the section, I can also use the, the, can also define this as a type 1 region. Now, type 1 region, that means I will use a vertical line. However, I need to break it up into R1 and R2. R1 and R2, okay, knowing that when I add the two up together, I will get the same thing. D, uh, dx and dy plus double integral of R2, 2x minus 2y. Sorry, 2x minus y squared, okay? And then this one is going to be the same value as this one over here. Now, why do I need to do that? Well, basically, because if I extend this line out, um, I can't integrate from here to here. You see, there's a in part of the intersection over here, and this part of uh, the region R obeys this curve, this line, okay? It's a bit messy. We'll go through a more proper example, but um, just to lead you on, we can do it both ways. Define as type 1 or define as type 2. Sometimes, not all the time, but we can. It should give us the same result. Thank you so much. Next lesson coming up.